Hi, my name is Anthony Cummins and I'm a historical researcher and author. Today I'm going to do a bit of a different video because it's Halloween 2012, so this is just for fun. And what I want to do is talk to you about how Dracula and Frankenstein really appear in the literary works. We all know Dracula and we all know Frankenstein. So first of all, let's start with our Dracula. My favourite version, to be honest, this, this one, this book, it's quite nice actually. I don't know who it's done by though, which publisher. Alright, Barnes and Noble, New York. Okay, let's see what it says about these appearance. His face was strong, a very strong, aquiline, with a high bridge of a thin nose and peculiarly arched nostrils, with lofty domed forehead and hair growing scantily around the temples, but profusely elsewhere. His eyebrows were very massive almost meeting over the nose, with bushy hair that seemed to curl of its own profusion. The mouth, so far as I could see it, under the heavy moustache, was fixed with a rather cruel looking, with particularly sharp white teeth. These protruded over the lips, whose remarkable rudeness showed astonishing vitality in a man of his years. For the rest, his ears were pale and the tops were extremely pointed. The chin was broad and strong, and the cheeks were firm though thin. The general effect was one of extraordinary pallor. Let's move on to the next bit. So Hark has now just gone into the Dracula, he's climbed down, and he's opened the coffin, and he's looking down at Dracula in his coffin after Dracula's fed. So I saw something which filled my very soul with horror. There lay the Count but looking as if his youth had been half renewed, for the white hair and moustache were changed to a dark iron grey. The cheeks were fuller, and the white skin seemed ruby red underneath. The mouth was redder than before, for on the lips were gouts of fresh blood, which trickled from the corners of the mouth and ran over the chin and neck. Even the deep burning eyes set amongst the swollen flesh, for the lids and pouches underneath were bloated, it seemed as if the whole awful creature was simply gorged with blood. He lay like a filthy leech, exhausted with his repletion. Okay, so what, what does that mean? What we've got is we've got an old man who's crouched up. He's got balding head with white, long hair, bushy eyebrows, bushy moustache, pointed ears, flaming, like, you know, piercing eyes, sharp teeth, and a very strong jaw, but thin. And then later on, after he's fed, get to a good bit of the music, after he's fed, he's laying in his coffin like a giant leech, bloated with blood coming all over him. And he's renewed now, his hair is darkish and his grey dark. By the way, this is a Dracula soundtrack. So, that is nothing like the actual description. Uh, what I do know from my brief research is that actually Dracula, uh, Bela Lugosi, brought along the new Dracula image of the suave, sophisticated Count. While he is sophisticated in the other one, he's from an archaic and medieval time and he's quite horrific. So, um, that's Dracula. But let's move on to our favourite friend, Frankenstein, or more correctly, Frankenstein's monster. Right, the first thing you should know is that actually Frankenstein is not called Frankenstein, yeah? Everybody thinks Frankenstein, the green-faced guy with a bolt, that's his name, but it's not. Frankenstein is Victor Frankenstein, who is the doctor. He's the mad scientist guy who lives in Castle Frankenstein. He's a baron, don't forget. And he lives in Castle Frankenstein doing his experiments. So, actually, what you think is Frankenstein is actually Frankenstein's monster. He is never named in the book. Uh, he's things like devil, ugly, ogre, things like that but he doesn't have a name, of course, because he's made from different parts. So he's just the monster. Um, so what I'll do now is, uh, I'll paraphrase this, but let's read a bit of what, what the description of him, him is. Remembering that he's a green monster guy with bolts. He's eight feet tall, hideously ugly. He's got translucent yellow skin. Watch, when you look through, you can actually see the muscles working underneath as he shifts. Um, so seeing the workings of his innards. He's got watery, um, blackish, glowing eyes. 
and uh, he's actually got flowing black hair. So imagine, instead of this short cropped hair, he's got flowing black locks coming down with deep watery eyes, and he's actually got black lips, but with pure white teeth. So what we've got here is a colossal creature, long black hair, yellowish skin, uh, deep set eyes, black lips, white eyes, who's dressed in rags. Now, of course, it was done in the 90s, Frankenstein. Let's have a look at the picture of him here. That's probably closer to the original, you know, but lacking of the hair, you know, that type of thing. However, I've just done this video for a bit of fun for Halloween. I hope you enjoyed it. That is Dracula and Frankenstein, the way they were meant to be shown and meant to be done. And uh, if you like medieval things or dark medieval things, Pop along to my website, which is www.natori.co.uk, just after I've finished speaking, and click downloads, there's lots of free downloads, or click um, publications, you see what books I've wrote. So I hope you enjoyed that, happy Halloween, and enjoy the rest of your day scaring people. See you later, bye bye.